Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Twist Gaming. We are here live at Gen Con 2017 from Indianapolis, Indiana, and I am here at the Mayday Games booth. And I am joined today with... Ryan Bruns. And... Jay Treat. And we are here to check out Cahoots. Yeah. Awesome. Yay! Yay! So Cahoots is, uh, we have an advanced prototype here. We're going to be launching this game on Kickstarter soon and uh, be a future release, so and it's designed by Jay. Here. Very fortunate to have you here today. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Uh, so tell me a little bit about Cahoots as a general before we get into the gameplay. As a general? Yeah, like, uh, it's a trick. It's a. I would say it's a twist on a trick-taking card game. <laughs> there's some. Uh, there's some interesting <laughs> elements to it that that separate it from uh, traditional trick-taking card games. And as he goes through that, you'll kind of see some of those subtleties. And there's a lot. There's a lot more going on than what what you initially see with the game. And so more I felt than meets the eye? More was that than a Transformer? Meets the, yeah, it was. It was good, it was good. Shout out to Mike, no, just kidding. Uh, but we saw this at Origins a couple years ago and I fell in love with the game the first time we played it, so. And Jay's been very great to work with. Awesome, awesome. Uh, Jay, can you show me how to play Cahoots? Yeah, absolutely, I would love to do that. Um, so this is a competitive game where you're going to need to work with your opponents at different points okay. in order to win. Uh, the way that works is that there are six suits, uh, hearts, spades, clubs, cups, stars, and diamonds. Okay. And each of us, at the beginning of the game, is going to get one of these identity cards that tells us which three of the six suits we personally care about. Okay. So. And they're double-sided, so this is not secret information. It's, it's very important that it's public information. Okay. Right? Because uh, if, if we play cards and, and the first trick is won by stars, then we're going to find that you have won, that mm -hmm. you, you get to score points, and I get to score points, because we both care about stars. Uh, but, you know, maybe Spades wins, and you and Ryan score points, uh, and maybe uh, Clubs wins, and Ryan and I score points instead of you. Um, so ev everyone shares one of these suits with one of their opponents. So every round that you want to score points, you, you need to work with one of your opponents to do that. Uh, the way that uh, each turn works is that each of us will play a card in turn order, starting with the starting player. And you can play whatever card you want. So you can play the seven of hearts. And Ryan could play whatever he likes. And we're actually going to go twice around. Every trick, every player plays two cards. OK. So you might play another one of those. And Ryan might play a heart. Uh, and it actually doesn't matter who plays what at the end of the day. What's important is uh, we, we group the suits up and see which suit has the highest total rank. In this case, there's more hearts than anything else. Okay. And they have a higher total rank, and so hearts have won this trick. I'm the only one of the three of us who cares about hearts. So I I'm feel like the designer has set up this <laughs> round. <laughs> uh, so in this case, I'm going to get to score all four of the points that are available for the round. But if instead spades had won, then those four points would be split between the two of you because you both care about spades. Evenly? So, yeah, okay. so you would each get two points. Okay. Um, now, there's a, there's a clever way that we track those points, but before we do that, the next phase is that we're going to strategically eliminate half of these cards and we're going to add some of them to our hand. So you're actually going to be changing your hand during the course of play. Okay. Because so, so you're, you're the first player, so you would have the first opportunity to choose one of these cards to pick up and put into your hand. So you might look and say, hey. Cups would be the yeah. only one that I would have, and it's a seven cups as opposed spades, to the six. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. so you might choose the seven of cups to put into your hand, and uh, that will you know, improve your future plays because that will help you to win. In fact, so in the three-player game, uh, each of us has one suit that no one else has. In this case, cups is that suit. So you would definitely be uh, well do well to grab cups to help you win tricks all by yourself. Okay. Um, Which is the best way to win? <laughs> uh, right. And so uh, maybe Ryan looks at this field and says, "Well, it's actually more important to me that I kill this seven of hearts so that Jay can't win again. Um, so he might kill that." Point. And you know, so e each of us is going to do one of those things, and whatever you did the first time, the second time around, you're going to do the other thing. So you're always going to kill one card and keep one card. Okay. So you kept, you might kill this, yeah. Ryan might keep this, and I kill this. So now we get to put these cards that we kept into our hand, and the other cards are out of the game, and we're going to use these to track the points. So in the example where uh, spades won and you and Ryan split two points each, mm -hmm. Ryan gets two, two of these point cards, and you get two of these point cards. 
Um, so yeah, all, all of the cards get used up That's in nice. that way. Uh, every round you play two cards, you pick one up, you start with a, a 12 card hand and you play 11 rounds and whoever has the most points at the end of that wins. That's very cool. About how many people can this game uh, accommodate? It's three or four players. That's not bad. I can see the game going at a, at a nice pace for three or four players. Not too long. How, how, about how long is the game? It's usually about 30 minutes. can be shorter. That's very cute. What inspired you to do, make the game? Where did the idea come from? Uh, uh, the short answer is that I, I'm really drawn to games where you, you need to uh, value your opponents, where you need to uh, see, see ways that you can interact in positive ways with your opponents that can benefit you and your opponent. Um, I, I'm, I'm very attuned to the idea that you know, just because I'm trying to win and you're trying to win doesn't mean that we can't work together along the way to do it. That's not bad. There's a lot of uh, cooperative, competitive games that I feel kind of miss the mark. And I, I like how this is set up to where you, being competitive, you can't go, it seems like you can't go all in with being competitive. You, can't, you, ha you must be a cooperative to a certain degree. Yeah, and, and sometimes it's a matter of working out exactly how, how we're going to work together. And maybe maybe sometimes I betray you halfway through the game because I've already gotten what I need from you. I, sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't work. You really have to weigh those social uh, implications. <laughs> but you've got everything is out in the open in this game, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, w we don't know what's in our starting hands, right. but who who is what and what we are to each other is very public. It's very cool. It's very cool. Thank you very much for showing me. Thank you. Appreciate it. So, Ryan, yes. what other games does May Day have here at Gen Con or Gen Con releases? We're, uh, as far as Gen Con release, we're doing an early release of Five Seals of Magic. Okay. Uh, the street date for that is September 15th, so we're doing a limited early release of that game. Uh, in that game, you are each playing... Um, uh, you're trying to get different uh, spells from different schools of magic, and you're using a dice drafting mechanism to break seals to get... It's kind of like a dungeon-like board. Okay. You're trying to get through and collect these spells. And what those spells do in the game is it allows you to mani manipulate the dice values. And if you play with certain groups of spells, you can play mean if you want, or you can play the nice version, or you can add spells that let me mess with your dice and oh <laughs> do stuff like that. But uh, it's been a very popular game. We're really excited. It was uh, produced in Russia, so we have a license for it here in the U.S. Very cool. Uh, the other game we're showing off is Macroscope, which we released at Origins. Uh, it's done really well for us here. Uh, that also came from a Russian publisher. But in that game, uh, there's a little mechanism that covers images. There's 400 images in the game. Okay. But you're rolling dice, and there's dials on top of this little mechanism that you're, you're using the dice values to reveal the to pull off the numerical the dials. dials. You get right to see pieces of the image that's held underneath. Okay. So if I know what that image is, I can make a guess. And if I'm right, say it's a piece of pizza, then you count up how many dials are left covering the image and that's my victory points. Okay, so the sooner that you guess for what the image is correctly, the more points the more that you're points going you to get. get. If you know what it is and it's out of turn, you can pay me your victory points to take a guess out of turn if you think you know what it is. The victory points that I have in hand already yeah, yeah, you to start earn out, the new victory to, points. To, yes. And, as, mm. and it goes around. And there's also okay. a family variant that doesn't allow, that takes out the dice but lets you just pull off dials and the people that, you know, whoever can guess it based on the number of dials. You take, everyone gets to make an equal number of guesses. And so, but that's done very well for us. Like I said, there's 400 images in the game, so there's a lot of replay play value with the game. But very cool, very yeah, yeah. interesting. Uh, do you guys have anything upcoming after Gen Con? Uh, after Gen Con, uh, we should be, we'll be previewing, hopefully by Essen, we'll have the Viceroy expansion, okay. which is a deluxe expansion. It has several modules in the game. Those that are familiar with Viceroy, uh, the modules aren't set in stone yet, but it'll have different modules you can add to the base game. There's going to be more cards than there was in the base game and some uh, different player boards and different ways to play. So you can play with all the modules or one of the modules, whatever you want to do. So. Sounds great. Yeah, we're cool. really excited. Awesome. Well, gentlemen, is there anything else you want to make sure our audience knows before we say goodbye? Um, we thank our fans, and uh, we have a really ex I mean, it's, it's a future, future announcement. Yes. <laughs>
Yes. It's the future. future so a year from you know next Gen Con, we'll have a large release based on an IP from Brandon Sanderson, if you're familiar with that author. He, uh, he's the author that finished the Wheel of Time series. Oh. Yes. So the game is Way of Kings by Brandon Sanderson. You and Aaron, my husband is a bit, we, but okay, so Brandon Sanderson finished up the work on Wheel of Time for... Robert were, Jordan. That's the name that I was for Robert for. Jordan, he also did the Miss Bourne series, he's written a lot of, lot of books. Yes, so, my house is full of them. He's a guest author here, he's here in the, at the show this weekend, so... Um, but we're excited for that, it's been, uh, and it's, that game is designed, co-designed by Matt Riddle and Ben Pinchback, who designed Wasteland Express, Fleet. Okay. Uh, Back to the Future. Wasteland Express was with Jonathan Gilmore. Yeah. Yes. yes. So um, we're excited for that game. It's going to be way out of Mayday's wheelhouse. It's going to be miniatures, a hundred dollar price point, big box, Ooh. two to four players, thirty minutes per player is the game. Um, for those that are fans of Way of the Kings, it's very, very thematic. It's really thematic to the game, uh, and so it'll really make the fans happy. But it also those that aren't familiar with the books, they'll still have a good time playing the game. It's not so inside that those that aren't familiar will be lost. Won't get but anything. Yeah, yeah. It's just an enjoyable realm to kind of be in in a yeah. game. It's not a pasted on theme. It's very thematic to what happens in the first book and how things go and the different characters. So we're really excited. We're shooting for Gen Con next year to have that release. So we're excited about that. It's very exciting. If you have fans who want to keep up with the progress on that project, how do they find out more about it? This is subscribe to the Mayday newsletter on our website. If you go to our website, you'll a pop-up will come up subscribing to the newsletter. We keep our fans updated there, as well as uh, our different media channels. We'll send out press releases and updates that way. So, that'll be Kickstarter. Yes. Yep. Yep. Well, no, it's going to be Kickstarter before. Hoping to have it released at Gen Con. So, yeah. Awesome. Hoping in the spring we'll get it kickstarted and then released. So, so. we got some good sculptors for the miniatures. We're excited. So. Any names for the sculptors? I don't have some of them locked down yet, but. Okay. So. And I don't want to name drop some of them yet. But that would? Yeah. Fair enough, fair enough. I see I'm trying to pull the secret information yeah, yeah, yeah. out. I'm trying. I don't want to get yelled at. <laughs> <laughs> All right, gentlemen. Well, thank you very much for your time. This has been a lovely interview. Thank you very much for showing me cahoots. I, by the way, think that the art on this game is absolutely gorgeous, too. So. Well, thank, thank you. you. You're very welcome. Thank you. Have a good night, everybody. Thanks.